Welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Mitch English along with Raisa Pascal. You know, we've all heard about the important roles that bees, butterflies, and other insects have in the natural ecosystem. In fact, up to 87% of the crops worldwide actually rely on insects for pollination. Our next guest, Cedar Anderson, he's the co-creator of the Flow Hive. It's a revolutionary way to extract honey straight from the hive. He's joining us today from Australia and has some very interesting things that we can all learn about the importance of, of bees, and butterflies, and so on. Welcome to the show. We know it's very late where you're at. Your, your father and you created this company with the intention of just educating general public on the benefits of beekeeping, right? But tell us actually how all this came about, and now it's a worldwide thing. Thank you very much for having me. So basically, I was keeping bees in my young 20s, and I was selling the honey to the local shops. And to get the honey out was this long, involved process right. where you had to have a part, get in your bee suit, brush the uh, bees off the combs, or use a leaf blower to blow them off, take those frames to the processing shed, which was the shed I lived in, and then put those frames in a centrifuge, spin the honey out, and then go through a process of filtering that honey to get to what you have there to put in a jar. Now, all of that was a lot of sweaty, messy, hard work and quite a disturbance for the bees. And I thought, hang on, there must be a better way. Can't we just tap the honey straight out of the hive? And that's what started a decade-long pursuit of inventing. Okay, now by this new process, I guess it sounds more like a process here by popping it right in there. How, how, obviously, there's a big difference in the way we extract the honey, but is anything lost in that or is it still the same thing that you get by using that process that you spoke of? So the old way is that long process I was just speaking about of taking those frames for processing. Mm -hmm. Now, what my father and I came up with after a decade of inventing was a way that actually needs zero processing where you turn a handle on the hive and the honey flows directly out into your jar without needing any further processing and it's ready for the table. And it's a lot easier, obviously. You know, here in America, uh, we're starting to, people are getting back to nature and they're, they're really realizing the importance of what these insects do and, you know, we're tired of the processed foods and that sort of thing. If somebody out there is actually thinking about becoming a beekeeper, where do they actually start? How do you actually gather about some, some bees? So people learn in all different ways. Some people like to just jump into it, order their equipment, then go and find some bees, contact a local uh, bee breeder. You can order bees in the mail, believe it or oh, not. Really? Or you wow. can take a swarm or you can take a split off a friend. There's all different ways to get started. But it's a fantastic uh, pursuit and there's so much learning along the way. Other people like to do online courses. We've got a great online course to, to offer as well as there's uh, local bee clubs and things that will do hands-on courses with you. Now, if I say if maybe like they live in an apartment, you know, they want to help out bees, they want to help out the environment, they can't have a hive, what can we do as citizens of the world to actually help the bees? So there's lots of things you can do to help the bees, but the primary thing they need is habitat and safe nectar to forage on. So that means leaving areas of your yard actually unkept. So it, it's oh. you can actually help the bees by being more lazy in your backyard. Oh my Leave gosh. Some habitat, right, for the bees. Leave some, some mulch. There's a whole lot of uh, solitary bees that all they need is is like some mud or, or, or some leaf litter to actually nest in and raise their young. So doing that really helps not only bees, but other really important insects of our world. And also planting flowers is great as well. Oh yeah, you need those flowers so they can actually pollinate. A lot of people just perked up when they go, I can be lazy and I can help out bees. I love this because bees are the hardest workers around. And there's a question I want to find out. Okay, here in America, first off, what we know about Australia is, is uh, every insect in the world there is going to kill you. You guys have these spiders bigger than my head. You got, you got all these. Are bees different in Australia than maybe you would find here in the United States? Are they more aggressive? Are they nicer? Do they spin in the opposite direction? Are, are they any different than what we are seeing here in the U.S.? So the honeybee humans have dragged all around the world with them wherever they go because they're such amazing pollinators. Yeah. So we have the same honeybee as you do in America, but there is 20,000 species of native bee in the world now. Okay. Not all of them form colonies, but we do have one here in Australia that does and it produces a small amount of honey 
and here the the indigenous are still harvesting them in traditional ways. Let me ask you, you had a, we showed some video here and you put the honey on top of the, the honeycomb or, or the hive rather, and they had different colors. What, what makes it for a different color? Is it where they get, gather the, the nectar from or why are they different colors altogether? So every flower in the world that produce, produces nectar produces a unique flavor okay. and often a, a unique color to go with it. So. A beautiful thing about the flow hive and was an unexpected thing was you can harvest different flavors from the different frames from oh, the one cool. hive so it's a beautiful thing to be able to share that is the different flavors that come out of your hive. i love that i love that all right if folks want to find out some more information about okay. all this because I, again as i said i find this extremely uh, interesting especially the fact i, I make sure it, Nobody, you never kill a, a bee or a honeybee as well. But folks want to find out more about this and maybe they can have some land and maybe they want to be lazy and have uh, the flow, flow <laughs> that, that you speak of. Where can they go to find out more information? Honeyflow.com. If right. you arrive there, we'll have lots of information. We can point you in the right direction and get you started in the amazing world of beekeeping. And just to show you how hard bees work, how, to make like just a, 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 a canister of, of that honey, how many bees would it take to maybe like a jar of honey for them to, to work and what would they have to, to do? That's an incredible thing. So a beehive can contain up to 50,000 bees. Wow. And that colony can visit 50 million flowers in a day. So wow. that's how busy they are. Cedar, that is and incredible. We, I, I gotta tell you, I'm gonna find out more about this. We're gonna put this interview on our website as well. Folks could find out more. Keep the bees alive, get lazy. We'll have more flash after this. <laughs>